Hello everyone, welcome back to my Chanel. We're in 4K, girls. How do I look? Do I look stunning in my 4K dimensions? So I hope everyone is having a wonderful day today and guess what we're going to do? <gasps> so I was chatting to Roly a couple of days ago and he happened to send me this little video to look at on Instagram and I was a bit like, oh, what is it? What is it? What is it gonna be? Is it just gonna be some awful hideous thing that's gonna make me absolutely want to like throw myself into a coma? Luckily, I don't think it is about that, wonderfully enough. So there is a new brand in the UK called War Paint for Men. Basically, it's like a male, masculine, masculine muscle men makeup brand for men, basically, available in John Lewis. This video is not sponsored, can you actually imagine? So, this brand is trying to like revolutionize the idea that like men can wear makeup to be more confident, more, feel more like attractive in photo shoots and in day-to-day -day life. And you know what? I'm all about that. With that being said, today we're going to watch a specific video that looks like it is a makeup tutorial, I must say, which is featuring this guy called Liam McLeese, which, uh, who is a, um, rather attractive tattooed man who's going to teach us how he does his makeup using the exclusive war paint for men brand. Should we have a little watch, girls? I want to watch some real manly men put on some makeup. Let's have a watch. What's going on, guys? You good? I just want to go through with you a few little tips and tricks what I use when I go to big events, photo shoots, or parties, nights out, you name it. When you need to be looking fresh, this is what I use. Can I just say, have you ever seen a tutorial in which they're like fully naked? Can you imagine if like Jackie Ina came on camera and was like, hello girls, today we're going to be doing this. <laughs> I love it. Um, I kind of get the idea that perhaps you didn't need to have your top off for this. So first of all, I can say that this guy has like quite nice looking skin by the looks of it so far. We haven't even started the tutorial. It doesn't look like he has anything particularly problematic to cover up. So I'm not familiar with any of the products by War Paint. So let's see what he does to like invigorate the flesh. Oh, that was a bit much, wasn't it, girls? It's War Paint for men. You may have seen him on Dragon's Den. Basically, it's just makeup for men and it gets rid of any blemishes, spots, you name it. This will cover it and get you looking fresh. Trust me. Interrupting there, I just want to actually say that like makeup will not get rid of blemishes or like scarring or anything like that. It's not going to get rid of it. What you're going to be able to do is camouflage it for an event or perhaps for a day. It's not going to technically get rid of anything. But maybe that's just semantics. Maybe that's just me. Nothing wrong so far. Step one, we're going to be using the tinted moisturizer. We'll use oh, this to get the skin nice and off. hydrated. So we're going to apply it nice and evenly across the skin. We've also got a nice little applicator oh, here. No, and we'll it into it's nice and even. Oh. What have I just watched? Okay, so you've put some. Uh, tinted moisturizer on your skin with your hands on your cheeks and that was just about it really and then you've got in and dragged this this like sponge fully across the face so that um that is not how you apply a tinted moisturizer i'm a bit confused about this because obviously like i don't get that this guy perhaps he's obviously not really had much experience with cos cosmetics in the past there are some absolutely phenomenal men who wear makeup who could easily easily have done some tutorial like this for the war paint instagram now Oh, it's so violent, isn't it? This gets the skin hydrated, gets rid of any dry patches, so you're ready to right, apply the rest of the... I can tell you for sure, sweetie, immediately, that if you apply any tinted moisturiser like that, with a sponge like that, you are going to exacerbate dry patches and certainly not get rid of them or camouflage them. I'm not familiar with the war paint tinted moisturiser at all. It might be a little bit more full coverage than lighter coverage but i'm sort of assuming that with most tinted moisturizers you're perfectly fine to go in with your fingers for it realistically because you just want to create that soft even canvas and you can gently pat it into the skin do not rummage onto your face like you're trying to i don't know dig up a garden or something like that that is not what we're going for here he also pulled quite hard on his eyes now if you are trying to do this sort of like anti-aging look better routine in real life or in pictures or whatever the chances are obviously he takes care of his appearance i can absolutely 100% see this. He just needs to be a lot more gentler with how he is applying this product because pulling at the eyes over time, sure you might not be doing this every single day, but if you start pulling at the eyes, eventually your eyes are going to end up like very upset small prune bags. And we do not want very upset small prune bags upon our eyes because that doesn't look youthful and it also doesn't look, um, basically it doesn't look youthful, does it girls? No, I think we all just want to get away from, um, fine lines and wrinkles, those pesky things. Step two. We're going to be using the concealer 
This is to get rid of any blemishes, spots, any scarring like I've got here, any sort of dark patches under your eyes. Uh, I'm going to have to stop you there because it's not actually going to get rid of your scar in your forehead because concealer, unless it's literally filled with like... I don't know, spackle or something. It's not going to fill anything in. Concealer is there literally as like a sort of high coverage colour corrector. So if you've got dark under eyes, it's going to help diffuse those and make your eyes look a lot more bright and awake. However, I don't quite know what's going to happen here. We're going to have to wait and see because I don't know if he's going to do the sort of traditional thing, which is where you would put a lighter concealer underneath the eyes. That in male makeup does not necessarily work the best because it's going to give you a feminized appearance to have a brighter underneath the eye like <gasps> daisies and sparkling and i'm awake i've had a good night of sleep you don't actually necessarily want to do that with men's makeup what you actually want to do is just uniform everything and make it look more invigorated now that is a key word here because if you start highlighting it starts to get a little bit feminized and if you still want to keep that masculine rugged effect you're gonna to have to play with a shape rather than color but let's have a little look see what what does he do you're not looking tired for photo shoots don't want none of that. So we apply that just by getting a bit under the eyes here. We dab a nice little bit of that on. Just get a little nice dark eyes. Got my scar there. I'm gonna rub it in evenly with the magic sponge down. I, once again, am a little bit confused about this because, as I said earlier, there are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of extremely talented men in makeup that could have easily have done this or even given, like, a slight tutorial to this guy first if the company really wanted to go with this model to, like, showcase the products. What's the point of putting concealer on a, on something if you're literally going to immediately take a sponge and wipe it all away, what you've literally just put on the skin? The way that you need to apply concealer if you are a man, sweetie, if you're watching, is to literally dab it into the areas that you need it. Go for a colour that's very similar to your skin tone, if not exactly the same, because you do not want to highlight those blemish areas. Believe you me, sweetie, I know a little thing or two about male makeup. Um, uh, we're not gonna go there in this video, how about that? Also, I don't actually feel like he applied enough in the right areas, but we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's let's wait to pass full judgement until we see the finished look, shall we? As you can see, it comes up with dark eyes, fades out any scarring, and that's that. Next stop. We have the bronzer, which we're going to apply this naughty little brush here. No, a nice brush. little bit on. Don't want to overdo it so it still keeps that natural look. Just dabbing it in. Applying no. it now. Stop! Who puts contour or like bronzer here? Have you ever seen anyone with bronzer here? Also, did you actually see any colour payoff come off of the brush then? I don't think I did. If we look at this still here, can we see this here? Look, like he's already put bronzer there and there's literally nothing there, which I suppose is good because you actually put bronzer here. It's going to warm up this entire centre part of your face and make you look like you've just gotten hot carrying something really heavy up the stairs or I don't know, digging in the garden for weightlifting exercise. Whatever it is you men do in the gym, I just don't know, girl. I love the fact he called it a naughty little brush though. I like that. I think that's cute. I wouldn't, I mean, obviously if you ever want to wear makeup as a man and you want to get that bronze look, realistically you're going to have to start venturing into something called contouring and bronzing. That realistically is to apply bronzer anywhere that you would want to get hit by the sun. So that's on the perimeter of your face, just onto the cheekbones and even a little bit onto the center of the nose where you would naturally catch a little bit of sun when you're out and about. I wouldn't put bronzer right underneath the eye because it's just going to make you look really strange. Why cover that area with concealer and then immediately go in with bronzer? Like it's just gonna look weird patchy and you haven't even set what is on your face Like it's all liquid still and that concealer even look like a cream one So it's gonna move about it's gonna take all this product and move about this is gonna look really really strange in real life Let's continue looking fresh And last but not least we have the anti shine powder You're Using this just to get rid of any sort of shine on the skin just apply an even no, little no, amount. No, no. Okay, can we all see what he did wrong there? Now, I'm not saying he necessarily did it wrong, but for a look that you want to go for, which I'm assuming you want to look more sort of like young, wide awake, fresh, and like ready to take on the day with your like ragged, masculine look. Problem number one is that he applied the anti shine powder while squinting like this. Now, if you're squinting like this and you apply any amount of powder over a wet product that's in your face like this, 
you're going to set those lines into your makeup and you're going to look a lot older than you uh, would necessarily look without pulling a face and then setting that face, basically. Do you remember that saying from when we were like four years old that was like, don't make a face if the wind changes, it'll get stuck like that. Basically, what everyone should have said is, don't make a face and put powder on it because it'll get stuck like that. Because that's basically what is that? That was disgusting, wasn't it? I'm sorry, girls. That's exactly what's going to happen. But also, um, did you notice he didn't put bronzer on this part of his face? So he's going to have like bronzer around here, underneath the eye, across here, down here into the beard line, and none up here. I mean, interesting. Just so you've still got that natural sort of look, but you're still glowing without shining like a headlight. But also, can you tell at this point, in this this still image here, so the point of makeup for me is to look better after you've put it on. In this little snapshot I see of him here, he actually looks a little bit too powdery in my liking. Now, the thing is with male makeup is that you don't want to take away the shine, the natural shine of the skin, because that makes it more believable. If you've got a flat matte skin, like the old Hollywood girls of the, like, 1950s, for example, Marilyn Monroe, who is an icon to me, I love doing old Hollywood would movie makeup on myself I paint my face like a showgirl and I set it that way basically you don't want to have ultra matte skin if you are a man doing manly makeup for like you know day-to-day -day life if you look too flat it's gonna be suspicious and people are gonna clock you for wearing makeup and still realistically you want makeup to be believable I mean realistically no one wakes up with a bright blue eyeshadow like me nobody wakes up with lashes these long but I like to do my makeup in such a way that it is seamless with what you naturally have and if you start mattifying the skin too much on a male face it starts to look very artificial. Maybe people won't necessarily assume you're wearing makeup, but they will be paying more attention to your face than you would feel if you weren't wearing makeup. And that could in its own way give you more insecurities than you started with by wanting to wear makeup. Do you see what I mean, girls and guys and non-binary pals? Also, have you seen, he's, he's like put powder into his beard and that's a massive no-no in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. There you have it, guys. Go check him out, guys, honestly. Great. <laughs> well, uh, that was definitely something, wasn't it? A um, couple of things, obviously, that we went through in that uh, that video. I mean, how does he look at the end? Let's let's try and find an actual picture of him at the end. Okay, there he is. There he is, smiling. That's a nice picture, isn't that nice? So he's got lovely teeth. God, I wish. And a lovely body as well. What a lovely golden tan. Now, the problem that I can see immediately with his makeup is, can you see that his face and his uh, shoulders are a totally different colour? Now, to me in this image, it does not look like he's put any bronzer on at all, which is really strange if you're trying to showcase a product to get people to buy it. A bronzer, to me, needs to give you that sort of sun colour, like tan warmth that you need to have on your skin if you are going to be mattifying everything out. You need to bring dimension back. If you look flat, it looks really weird. If you th then don't put something through the eyelashes like a little bit of brown or through the eyebrows because otherwise your whole face is going to look a bit powdery and a bit strange if the bronzer that he'd used was the same color as his the edge of his like shoulder in the bottom left here that would have been brilliant because it would have given him a little bit of color across the cheekbones and around the perimeter of the head wall paint if you want me to help you out guys and teach some people for your instagram and make some cute videos then get in contact girls you might like it i don't know you might not honestly this video is not a hate video i'm just i want these men to look the best and feel the best because quite clearly there is a want to look like the best version of yourself and you can absolutely do that with cosmetics i just think you need to know the right techniques that are going to really emphasize what it is that you want to emphasize even if Liam McLeese was still the model in this video I would have loved if like a professional makeup artist had sat him down on zoom or something for you know 20 minutes and gone you need to do this this and this and that's it all you need to do done and then he could have easily used those products and showcased them a thousand percent more successful than I think this video went but maybe that's just me being a little bit critical all right so as I know absolutely nothing about this brand should we go and actually see what other products they have available I think everyone deserves access to great cosmetics so let's hop over to the website and see what they actually have, shall we? Oh, this is nice. Okay, this website here, it's very um, mask. It's very like gunmetal. It's very black. It's very white. It's very sleek. So on their landing page, they do in fact say that all their makeup is cruelty-free, vegan, and produced in the UK. That is excellent. You know, in these awful Brexit times, we need some way of gen
generating more income for our own economy to try and make everything as best as we bloody can, girls. God, it's going to be a mess, isn't it? Okay, so let's have a little look at what they actually have. So if we go over to shop now, shall we have a look at their products? Let's have a look at their products. So they are a new brand, so I don't quite know what I'm expecting here. Uh, oh, okay, so they've got a couple of sets. Love the fact that it comes with like a bunch of products. Each of those products appear to be around the sort of 20 to 25 pounds mark. All right, let's have a little look see at the tinted moisturizer and see what the dealio is, my lovely. Oh, they've called it a men's BB cream up here in the URL. That's interesting, but it's actually called a tinted... Five shades? Five shades? Okay, I'm sorry, but five shades. Like, are there only five different colors of men in the UK? I, ooh. New brand, totally get it, but I do kind of feel like you have to launch with at least 20 shades. What have we got? We've got two, we've got like a pale shade, we've got a couple of tan shades, and we've got a couple of deep shades. I mean, it's not excellent, is it? Perhaps there are more shades on the way. Let's, let's leave it at that and hope for the best. The website seems really easy to navigate. I think for someone who potentially knows absolutely nothing about uh, cosmetics, the information is exactly there that you need. Tinted moisturizer is basically a mix of moisturizer and foundation. It gives light coverage, for a more natural look. It takes seconds to apply and lasts all day. Uh, interesting that they didn't define what a day is. To some people a day is six hours, to some people a day is, you know, 20 hours. So that's quite interesting. If you are new here, I'm actually a scientist. I have a biochemistry degree. I'm also a working makeup artist. So I like to know the ingredients in my stuff because one day I want to be a formulator. So let's have a little look-see at what is in the tinted moisturizer. So it's a water and silicone based formula. That's quite good. I do sort of expect that really from a tinted moisturizer. It's got a couple of good silicones in there. It's got a good bit of dimethicone one of my favorites, and cyclopentasiloxane, one of my absolute gold star quality ingredients. It's got a little bit of perfume in, which is a little bit like, mm, probably doesn't necessarily have to be perfumed if it's more of a skincare product than a cosmetic product. And it's got a little bit of vitamin E, which is a uh, tocopherol acetate. So it's got that little bit of a skincare factor to it as well, which is, you know, pretty good. What was the price? 22 pounds for 30 milliliters. That's pretty standard. I think for a department store kind of a price, that's pretty good. Oh my goodness, they've got loads of reviews. Oh, look at this, isn't this cute? Oh, look at that guy and his little dog. Oh, I love this. Okay, so this is lovely. Seeing actual people reviewing the products, like actual guys, like look at this guy here. He's got his chinos on, he's got his fancy going out boots. Paul L, should we read his review on this? Gives me confidence wearing this product. Tinted moisturizer, I will definitely purchase again. That is so sweet. Oh, look at these confident guys. I love it. Oh, there's lots of guys with dogs on here as well. Oh, that is so cute. I have all the time in the world for that. I have all, all the time in my day for that. All right, shall we hop over and have a little look at the concealer and see what the concealer is all about, shall we? So from my judgment, I think it's a cream-based concealer. I mean, it pretty much looked like that, didn't it? So the concealer is 18 pounds. Should we have a look what you get? So it's a little tub. Oh, it's a little glass jar. So, you know, I'm happy with that. <sighs> Five shades again, that's, that's not good. That's, that's not good at all. We need more shades, more shades everybody, more shades. I can 100% tell you that if my boyfriend went to purchase from this brand, his shade would not be there. Um, they look a little bit like they're on the cool yellow based sides. And I think that most men's skin actually has quite a lot of pink in it. And not in a terms of, you know, we want every man to look pink as hell. We need more neutral tones because from my computer scheme right now, these colors are looking a little bit unrealistic. Uh, I'm gonna reserve judgment. As I say, they are a relatively new brand. How much stuff do you get in the concealer? What is the size of the concealer? I need to know. Drag the image to spin it. All right, here we go. Five grams, okay. Five grams for a cream concealer, that's not too bad actually. I know that some uh, companies range between uh, 1.5 grams and three to four grams of product. 18 pounds is a good price for a good concealer if it does actually do what it says on the tin. So what does it say here? Great to hide dark circles, spots, scars and blemishes. Dab on and blend out with your fingers or a sponge. Now blending is a real key word when it comes to makeup like this because what we saw with the sponge being dragged across the skin is not blending. That's not blending, yeah. It's not. Okay, so it's an oil cream based concealer. Paraffin is the first ingredient. So, you know, I think paraffin is mineral oil, is it? Let me just double check that. I don't want to be lying to you all. It is indeed. It is a highly refined mineral oil. So this 
concealer is an oil cream emollient based product which means it is gonna have a shelf life and when I mean shelf life I don't mean necessarily on the shelf it's gonna have a life I mean on the face it's going to have a specific short longevity because oil based things break down on the skin they just do eventually and if they don't set properly they're gonna start forming into fine lines and wrinkles the best option I think would be to for this brand to bring out a really high coverage liquid uh, concealer that could be dotted on the finger and then applied. I think that would be the best option for this brand to take. Something that really is long lasting because a concealer like this, if you put it on for say, I don't know, 7 p.m. at night, you're gonna look very different at 7 p.m. than you will at 10 p.m. and then you will at 3 a.m. if you're going out with your laddish friends or I don't know. I don't know what you guys do. You know what I mean. Go out for drinks or whatever it is that you're doing. It's got a lot of wax in this one as well. So we've got microcrystalline wax. We have candelilla wax. And we have fruit wax as well. And we've also got tea tree oil in it. So it's gonna be quite an oil-based, waxy consistency. Definitely emollient-based. It's not gonna be as long-lasting as the tinted moisturizer because silicone-based products do in fact last longer on the skin than oil-based products do. As I was saying, I think a good high-coverage liquid concealer would be a little bit better for most men than an oil-based or a cream-based concealer because you're gonna want something that lasts all day, especially if you're quite active, it's gonna break down so fast on your face if it's oil. That's just my opinion. I've been in makeup 12 years. I have known these things to happen. I mean, I can do a full face of makeup at 6 a.m. in the morning and still look the same at midnight if I really pay attention to the quality of products that I use. All right, so what do you guys think about the brand War Paint? So I think, excellent, wonderful idea that we are making cosmetics more available to people that they want to use them. I think, do you know what? If you've got a problem, you've got a blemish on your face or you've got some sort of skin issue that you really just want to cover up for a few days a week or something like that a special event then you should absolutely have the option to do that there is absolutely no need to feel hyper insecure about something that can very easily be fixed without a stigma. That's my opinion. Auntie Luxy Poo's opinion. There we go. So guys, what do you think of war paint? Let me know in the comments box below because I am fascinated. Fascinated to watch this brand, see where it goes and with what happens with it. I want to see more. Show me more. And this week's Instagram shout out goes to Mitchell B underscore 94. If you want to be in with a chance of being featured on next week's video as the Instagram shout out, make sure you follow me on Instagram. So I have a new channel member. Welcome to Migusta La Goose. Thank you so much for being a top tech member to this channel. Also, I want to say a huge thank you again to Morrigan E. Wolf. I want to say thank you to my new channel member, Winona7, and to my new Patreon, Sandra V and Lot Ye. I think that's how I say your name. I'm sorry, my lovely. Hopefully I haven't butchered that. Thank you so much for watching, my beautiful guys. Guys, gals, and non-binary pals, I will see you in next week's video.